Hello there. Welcome to D-Light Channel, Development, Empowerment and Leadership Initiative. This is a channel where we are passionate about world transformation, one man at a time, one community at a time. Thanks for joining me this week. If you've been here in the past few weeks, you know that we have been talking about entrepreneurship made simple. We've done a couple of videos on that line already, but of particular interest are the last two videos where we have been focusing on the organizational life cycle. And we are focused on the startup phase as well as on the growth phase. And um, I promised last week that I will be going on to brand building, but I may have to pause that for a few weeks because there has been a lot of feedback from viewers who are asking questions around funding. What are the available sources of funds in the Nigerian market? And then um, in this era where you have a lot of um, angel investor, venture capital funds available and looking in the developing market direction, there is a lot of uh, request in terms of what do you do, how do you do it, when do you do it. I want to see how much of that I can answer before I then continue on the brand building journey. I hope you like that idea. So let's go. Now, when it comes to commercial lending or commercial borrowing, commercial source of funds, it is necessary, like I said, that you shine your eye very well before you pick up debt. Your decision for taking up debt should not be based on convenience. You must be able to see how the business will pay it up. However, there are a few sources of funds. They are not necessarily super straightforward, but they are doable if you can meet the requirements and you are passionate about it. One of such funds is the Bank of Industry. The Bank of Industry has a lot of different funds that it has put together, speaking to different segments of the market. There are those that are speaking to the young graduates who want to be involved in agriculture. There are those that are, that are speaking to uh, women, entrepreneurship. There are those who, there are, there are funds for those who are in manufacturing. What you need to do is to get close to a good consultant, you can contact us if you need that help, or get close to the bank. You have their website on the screen right now. You can go there, check the website. Their requirements are pretty straightforward. Like any other government institution, it's not a very straightforward curve, but if you are passionate and you can be persistent, you can get it to happen. The good news is that most of these funds come out in single digits, meaning the interest rates are a lot more affordable, the relationship with the banker are less stressful and strenuous, and you can be sure that uh, once you are qualified and they get to give you your funds, they will do whatever they need to do to also help you succeed. I have a few cases that I can refer to. Another source of borrowing that you may want to consider, particularly if you are in the agri sector, either in terms of the planting, the anchor borrowing, or in terms of even the processing, the value addition, or even in terms of the trying to export agri products. You have Bank of Agriculture, like I mentioned earlier, you also have Bank of Industry taking care of some of these. There are different funds at the federal, at the state level, across the country, speaking particularly to agriculture since that is one of the major uh, uh, focus of the current administration. You may need to just go online, ask Professor Google, huh? just ask him. And it will point you in the direction of their requirements, the documents, the conditions you, you must meet before you can access those funds and the facilities. Feel free to do that because I am sure that you will find those funding a lot more affordable than if you go for a straight commercial funding, which many times is very high double digit. Now, 
Another source of funds which is really where most of the questions have been coming from has to do with angel investment or venture capital investment. What are these? There are pools of funds that different organizations and individuals have put together out there in the world looking for brilliant ideas, successful ideas that they can put those money in and then get themselves some good, good returns. What do you need to know about the venture funding? Don't be fooled. I repeat, don't be fooled. There is no free lunch anywhere, even in Freetown. The venture capitalist is not necessarily your friend. He only happens to have funds, and if he's interested in your business, don't think that he's coming because of you. He's coming because of himself, he's, be he's coming because of his funders, he's coming because of his owners. Therefore, when you see a venture funding interested in your business, you need to let all your alarm systems go on and you must be very, very cautious. That is why the very first thing you need to worry about when it comes to venture capital funding is to ask yourself this question. One, are you ready to have a third party in your business? Don't be fooled. If you take funding from the average venture funding, it completely changes the way your business is run. Decision making becomes more formal. You can no longer just follow your intuition or your gut feeling or uh, a sudden opportunity that opened in the market. It becomes a more rigorous, a more, there are many, many checkpoints that you have to check before you are able to say that this is the decision you want to take. In addition, you may not be sure that what will be of interest to you down the line will be of interest to your investor. If you doubt it, I have an article I'm going to share on the Telegram channel. It's the story of High TV, told by Tony Subar, who was the promoter. How many of you remember High TV? Yes, High TV was at some point competing head to head with DSTV in the Nigerian, I think, the Ghanaian market. The story of what killed High TV, I will share it with you. But the summary is that it had a lot to do with the con with the with the composition of the ownership after it was able to raise the funding. So when you decide to take on vest invest um, venture capital funding. Get ready, because it means that you no longer have the latitude and the leeway to act in the best interest of the business at the speed that you normally would have acted. The second question you need to then ask yourself, right in from the first one is, the most important thing, the very, very important thing beyond the fund is to check out the pedigree and the character of the venture capital funding it is the most important thing like you will hear where you want to enter into partnership it is not so much about the contract the legal document that you have signed it is about the, the character of the people in the partnership how their team dynamics will work in terms of relating one with another and how that affects business so before you even look at the funds, before you look at the rates, before you look at the terms, before you look at the valuation, check out the history. Who are the promoters? Which other businesses have they invested in the past? Try and find out how it has been. The truth of the matter is that people don't change just like that. The way they were is most likely the way they are going to be. And if anything is going to change, you probably will have to see the driver of that change. So, find out about their history. Where have they invested? How has it been? Be very critically interested in who they are. What values drive them? Are they here to hijack your business and kick you out? I have seen venture capital funds that they are not even interested in majority ownership. Their interest is not in taking over your business. 
Their interest is in giving you wings to fly while they have a bite of the outcome. But you have some. If you are not willing to relinquish total ownership or a material ownership, they are not going to drop any funds for you. When you begin to see those signals, get weary, get very careful because they portend what you should expect when you get in bed with your investors. So what I'm talking about is find out about their character, about their profile. Then the third thing is how much are you giving up and for how much? And at the center of that question is valuation. Typically, if this is your first round of funding, what you find is that there may not be enough basis of market valuation for your business. Usually, you are just starting maybe the second year, maybe the third year, and you have a product in the market that you have been able to validate in the market, like we said, you've gone through the startup and you are beginning to get into the growth phase and now you need that injection to take you forward. But you probably have not listed, it's even likely that you may not have any competitor or comparable company. So what you normally will do in that situation will be to look at the stock market, your local stock market most likely, to see which company is the nearest reference that you can have to your own organization. Either because they are in the same industry or they have this or similar dynamics or similar structure. And based on that information, you then say, if this is the market price for this share, it becomes a reference point. Of course, accountants will tell you that there are other means or other methods of valuing this kind of organization. You may value it based on asset if it is if it has any to show. You may value it based on cash flow, which is a very, very popular base of valuation, particularly if you can show some history of cash flow. So the valuation question is a critical question. Make sure that you don't sell yourself short because the lower your valuation, the higher the percentage of your business you will have to give up to get some material amount of money. But if your valuation is high, it then means that for a small portion of your business, you can get some meaningful amount of money that you can use for whatever you want to do. Now, speaking about valuation and how much you are getting, how much you are giving off. The fourth question, which you actually should then now answer is to say, how much of this business am I really willing to give up? Because really that becomes your ceiling. It does not matter where the valuation lands. If you are decided that you want to maintain control, you do not want to lose your ability to respond and react and act as you deem fit, then you must be clear that, then it must be clear to you that you cannot give out more than 15, 10, 15, 20% of the business. Because once you begin to cross that threshold, then you have a minority shareholding where some legal and contractual conditions begin to arise. I'm beginning to get long-winded, but there's still a lot to say about venture capital funding and angel investor. So allow me to stop here this week so that next week I can then have the concluding part on what to do with investment by the angel investor or funding from the venture capital. I'm sure you don't want to miss that episode. So spread the news. We are trying to make successful entrepreneurs in the developing market. Make sure that no one else is left out. Make it a date with me next week as we continue the conversation. But whatever you do, don't ever forget that Tim Mark is still my name. And all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. See you next week and bye.